Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 10th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Diego, California. The Department of Homeland Security released a brief analysis of malware that it is calling electric fish and that is according to the Department of Homeland Security associated with North Korea. Now, like I said, it's pretty brief what they're writing up here. There are some code samples, but overall, the write-up isn't terribly clear in what sort of makes this malware all that special. It appears to be a simple backdoor, essentially, that can be used uh, via a proxy system. The backdoor is authenticated, but it uses its own static username and password, so it does not rely on any authentication provided by the operating system. Now I can think sort of a couple possible reasons why a particular tunnel like this may come in handy. First of all, it's fairly flexible as far as what port is being used. Since it's not using a standard protocol, it may not get flagged by some application signatures that will, for example, alert on SSH running on a different port. Also, it's not using the operating system's authentication features, so it probably won't get logged whenever it is being used used. And like always with covert channels like this, once you do know what to look for, it's actually not all that hard to spot. This particular malware starts out with a static header that's being used to essentially identify and authenticate then to the receiver. Only two bytes of this header are intentionally randomized. KeePass is a pretty well respected open source password manager. Now, if you want to download KeePass, you better go to keepass.info. Keepass.com, while it does look like a site associated with the password manager, is actually not really officially affiliated with KeePass and has apparently earlier today directed to malware. Now, different people have seen actually different binaries being downloaded via keyspass.com. Looks like uh, often you actually do get a legitimate copy of KeyPass, at least for the Linux versions. In other cases, you get adware. So in short, don't go to keypass.com. You never really know what you're going to get. And this site again is not affiliated with the password manager, only keypass.com info is. I just did a quick check on Google. If you just search for KeePass, you do at least currently get the correct website. And Google earlier this week released its monthly Android update. Nothing really too exciting here. Yet another critical vulnerability in the media framework and also three critical vulnerability in system in addition to five high vulnerability. Critical vulnerability for Google means remote code execution. While bugs that lead to an elevation of privilege or to information disclosure are typically rated high. Security company Advanced Intelligence has released a blog post looking into the claim of the Russian hacking group FXMSP that they allegedly did breach three major antivirus companies. This hacking group is trying to sell some of the goods that they obtained in these hacks now, but it's not really 100% clear if they actually did breach uh, these antivirus companies and what they got out of it. Stolen were, according to these claims, a source code from the three antivirus companies. To an attacker, of course, source code like this is certainly valuable because it could not only indicate some strengths or weaknesses in these anti-malware product, but uh, maybe even vulnerabilities. And we certainly have had vulnerabilities in anti-malware before. But a big question here really is whether or not uh, this breach is real. Now, FXMSP has a history of similar high-profile breaches that have worked out 
about in the past. So it is very likely that they stole something from these companies. What's not clear is if the code is current, if it's real source code for the main products or if it's something totally unrelated. So in short, as a user of antivirus products, I probably wouldn't worry too much about it. The specific companies aren't really identified anyway at this point. And even if source code is leaked, it could still be quite a while until there are actually some exploits that are possibly derived from it. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.